thank you for the kind introduction sir uh, so uh, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to meet and learn so today my topic is to discuss on ideal neoadjuvant therapy in muscle invasive bladder cancer so let us see what is the standard of care as well as what are the advances that are going in this field in this next 15 minutes we have no we know that in the muscle invasive urinary bladder cancer there is a high risk of recurrence with surgical treatment alone we know the standard of surgery is radical cystectomy however the relapse rate is quite high to the tune of 30 to 50% in various studies so it has been standard of care to give perioperative chemotherapy and mostly neoadjuvant chemotherapy in this setting who are all fit for the radical cystectomy so it is seen that the response rate to the neoadjuvant chemotherapy is due to the tune of 40 to 60% and there is a 15 month overall survival with this platinum based chemotherapy in this subset of muscle invasive urinary bladder cancer we know the uh, the muscle invasive bladder cancer it starts from stage 2 and extends the spectrum extends up to stage 4a when we see the uh, uh, imaging uh, and evaluation of the muscle invasive bladder cancer it starts with transurethral dissection of bladder tumor along with cystoscopy to see the concurrent lesions along with the imaging of chest abdomen as well as pelvis when the it is stage 2 the ideal treatment is cystectomy and all those candidates who are fit for radical cystectomy has to undergo neoadjuvant cisplatin based chemotherapy if they are eligible for that therapy however it is a radical procedure and lot of lifestyle changes do incur after cystectomy so in those patients who are not willing or who are not suitable for cisplatin based chemotherapy are not suitable for cystectomy they undergo usually a, a triple modality treatment of chemotherapy radiotherapy in a concurrent setting as well as partial cystectomy to save the bladder in majority of the cases in stage 3a a similar paradigm is followed as in stage 2 however in stage 3b where the relapse rate goes on to the much higher rate recently based upon checkmate 274 trial 274 trial from the august 2021 fda has approved a immune checkpoint inhibitor in the advanced setting that is nivolumab to reduce the rate of recurrence in stage 4a the same adjuvant the uh, same approval applies to we can clearly see here from this publication which was done very long ago in 2003 in nejm uh, in patients who underwent surgery alone versus patients who have taken the neoadjuvant or adjuvant chemotherapy the survival rate is grossly separated and this is much more pronounced between 2 and 3 years after the treatment so how did this choice of cisplatin based neoadjuvant chemotherapy does evolve so it is based upon a meta analysis which has include 11 randomized clinical trials with about 3 more than 3000 patients the end points of this uh, meta analysis is oral survival and this is survival and it has included all the platinum based combinations including single agent platinum and when we see the hazard rates here hazard ratios here anywhere it is extending between 0.75 to 0.86 most of the clinical trials showing the benefit in favor of platinum based combination implying that nearly 1/4 to 1/5 of the patients they are saved from the progression events or the death events by giving this platinum based chemotherapy so after the meta analysis it is concluded that neoadjuvant chemotherapy it produces pathological complete response rates of to the tune of 35 to 40% and those patients who have achieved pathological complete response they have significantly five year uh, overall survival higher than those who are not achieving the pcr and the difference is to the tune of 35% at five years so we can say that platinum based combinations this demonstrate significant overall survival and pfs and uh, that is dfs benefit in adjuvant setting with 5% benefit in os and 9% benefit in dfs at 5 year landmark but in reality in the uh, typical clinical setting we know that majority of the patients due to the age at which bladder cancer manifests due to the comorbidities that accompany the age many of them are may not be suitable for cystectomy or cisplatin so 
there is no fixed criteria to determine who are all ineligible for cystectomy but the those patients to be eligible for cystectomy they should have a uh, good uh, functional status good cognitive status and they should be able to manage their medical comorbidities well in control so any end organ dysfunction they'll become ineligible particularly renal dysfunction they become ineligible for cystectomy for cisplatin ineligibility criteria there is criteria called galsky criteria which mentions that patient who is having performance status 2 or more creatinine clearance less than 60 ml per minute and grade 2 or more audiometric hearing loss which means uh, to measure this grade 2 ctcae audiometric hearing loss we need to order for the audiogram and in the audiogram if there is greater than 25 decibel shift in the two consecutive uh, frequencies tested then it is regarded as grade 2 audiometric loss anything which is uh, 25 decibel shift or more than that then it is considered as a grade 2 audiometric hearing loss in those patients and those with peripheral neuropathy grade 2 or more which means the patient is having symptoms and also having problems managing his instrumental activities of daily living iadl so those patients they will become ineligible for cisplatin and we know that nearly more than uh, up to 50% of patients they will not be eligible for cisplatin because of this criteria and of course heart failure is the one thing we need to take care uh, if it is niha class 3 failure or more the patient become ineligible because of the hydration we need to give for cisplatin so in these patients if we give cisplatin although patient is is able to take it on an acute basis but the benefits on the long term will be lesser than the toxicity by this cisplatin based chemotherapy uh, the problem for the clinician is that there is no standard neoadjuvant the therapy in cisplatin eligible ineligible patients like uh, where in ovary and lung cancer patient we can comfortably shift the patient onto carboplatin based regimens but there is no such criteria or practice uh, in new adjuvant setting in urinary bladder cancer so this is one of the landmark study uh, in urinary bladder multiple invasive cancer in non metastatic bladder cancer it is a french trial multi, multi center phase 3 trial it is done to test whether a less intensive regimen will achieve the same results as dose dense mvac regimen which has been the standard of care we know that there are two types of mvac regimens that are available classical mvac and dose dense mvac classical mvac is given every 28 days uh, dose dense mvac is given every 14 days that is every 2 weeks so this trial looked at whether dose dense mvac uh, can uh, dose dense mvac and uh, this a gemsis regimen can yield the same results as dose dense mvac when given in the neoadjuvant setting the primary endpoint is pfs at 3 years when we see the results in the intention to treat population the results are not really significant making gc as one of the options however when we see the organ confined response in a patients who have achieved less than t3 pathological t3 n0 the higher rate of responses are seen with dose dense mvac compared to the gc and also recent evidence also shows that three year pfs is definitely better with dose dense mvac than gc in terms of pfs so in those patients who are eligible who are fit particularly in those nodal involvement dose dense mvac is still the preferred regimen um, compared to gc however in a patients who have a borderline ps maybe gc is still an option so apart from the chemotherapy do we have other options because it is era of immunotherapy we know that immunotherapy has seeped into the bladder cancer scenario quite a long time ago in the form of etezolizumab however it is withdrawn for uh, pembrolizumab etc but some of the uh, drugs have been withdrawn for the uh, trial outcomes but is there a role in the new adjuvant setting for this checkpoint inhibitors so these are the this table indicates all the trials in various combination as a single agents in combination with uh, as a dual agents in combination with chemotherapy let us see briefly about the these ongoing trials because these are going to be standard of care in the future so how can we integrate cpis into the multiple invasive bladder cancer treatment it can be by using them as single agents or doublets or by combining with chemo and they can be used in the new adjuvant uh, followed by uh, followed by surgery new adjuvant setting perioperative setting and adjuvant setting as well as in those patients who wants their bladder to be spared from radical cystectomy also 
Let us see the trials that are testing a single agent checkpoint inhibitors in the neoadjuvant setting. There are two trials testing in the setting, atezolizumab in Abacus trial, pembrolizumab in Pure Zero One trial. The primary endpoint is pathological CA in both the trials followed by cystectomy. When you see the interim results, the final results are not yet announced. The median even free survival rate is not achieved in the intention to treat it, uh, intention to treat cohort in the pure one trial, which is really good. And we can see here that one year EFS is 84.5%, which is really uh, hopeful. In the Abacus trial, pathological response to new agent at one year RFS is 79%, which is also comparable to the chemotherapy. These are the trials which are checking for the CPI doublet, checkpoint in beta doublets, EP-NEVO combination, and the pathological response rates are to the tune of 46%, and Dilva-Tremolumab combination, 35%, dilva tremi for only two cycles, 37%. So this is the next set of trials, which are looking at a combination of chemo plus CPI in the near event setting. And we can see here uh, the chemotherapy regimens that were tried are the less intensive regimens like GEMSYS in almost all the trials are GEM single agent also. And pathological response rates, they are uh, almost always greater than 40% to the up to 50%. So these are the two trials which we uh, which need a special mention, which are using the chemo plus CPI in the phase three setting. One is Niagara trial, two is Energy trial. In the Niagara trial, the agent used is Dizvalmab plus chemotherapy. And once the uh, uh, surgery is done, adjuvant Dizvalmab is given. In the Energy trial, there is one more new uh, therapy, new uh, checkpoint inhibitor. In fact, it is a new new type of immunotherapy that is being tried. So in one of the arms. Along with the nivolumab, the IDO inhibitor, indolamine deacetylate inhibitor is being used along with the nivolumab and in the adjuvant setting, nivolumab and IDO inhibitor is being continued. The name, it is a, uh, uh, a scientific name and it is not a commercial name. So uh, with the amount of checkpoint inhibitor that is being used, so most of the medical oncologists, obviously they are concerned about the level of toxicity also. And when we can see here, it ranges anywhere between 15 to 25%. That is uh, nearly one fourth of the patient, they might have uh, grade three or more side effects, which is a little bit of concern, definitely. But with a real world experience, we'll, uh, we'll get to know what are the specific side effects in these settings. This is one more interesting study called EV103. EV is not an electronic ve electric vehicle. It is a N4 to map verdotin. It is a multi-cohort study, uh, which in combination with map is being tried. It is, in, it, it is also checking for the cisplatin ineligible uh, uh, chemotherapy. So this is really uh, a trial that can make a difference. We know that N4 to map verdotin is already approved and is being used in a metastatic urinary bladder cancer. So how does it act? It targets, it is a antibody drug conjugate. It targets a, a nectin-4. It's a, nectin-4 is a transmembrane protein, which is involved in the cellular process associated with oncogenesis. When it is inhibited, the addition between the two adjacent cells is uh, uh, affected. And so the cell, uh, the cellular growth as well as metastasis can be progressed. So whenever nectin-4 is targeted by this n 4 to my vedotin, there's a release of this drug called monometal orthostatin E, and which lead to the cell cycle arrest. So this is uh, looking at the pathological complete response and overall response rate in this trial. And uh, it is an interesting trial because this is a chemo-free reg uh, regimen, which is a combination of targeted therapy and checkpoint inhibitor in cisplatin ineligible population, uh, which is who are accounting for nearly 40 to 50% of uh, population who are receiving uh, cystectomy. So these are the ongoing trials for immune checkpoint inhibitor and radiation. I'm not going into details because uh, they're the code names. So what we can expect in the future, what is the evolving treatment paradigm for the muscle invasive bladder cancer? We can see here, whenever there's a muscle invasive bladder cancer, immune checkpoint inhibitors, they may seep into the almost every setting from the uh, stage two to stage four A and uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor plus BCG might be the first option instead of only BCG. And if there is a BCG unresponsive, we can go for the other immune checkpoint inhibitors in the second line and beyond. In the near agent, last minute to conclude, please. Yeah, sure. So in the near agent and adjuvant settings, 
the combination of chemo and pembro which are showing a uh, really good response rates and pathological complete response rate might change and also they might seep into this population who do not want to undergo cystectomy and of course we have seen the trials testing for the population in cystic ineligible population so in the future maybe we can better select the population to choose these costly therapies based upon the classification being given by the, the cancer genome atlas where we can get expect more than more responses by better selection of the population so to conclude cisplatin based new adjuvant chemotherapy is still the standard of care however in a patients who are cisplatin ineligible patients there is no standard chemotherapy so there comes the role of immune checkpoint in vitus there are some questions that need to be answered what will be the long term survival data only time can answer that thank you so much for this opportunity